Zubeya has a vision of Avizendum where she begs him to help her as she is losing everything. He awakens and the pair hugs. She's happy to hear his voice again and see his face. She misses him a lot. He notices that she is hurt. She says that it's just a scratch, but it festers and it's infected and corrupted. She suddenly feels her very being shattering from the inside out. Then she collapses. He urges her to find help, but she can't as she has no strength left. She considers letting go in order to be with him again, but he refuses and encourages her to find strength and life. He adds that she must do it for Azimandias. Zubeya decides to be strong for Avizendum and for Zim. Despite her injury, she soars high in the sky, but she eventually collapses in the woods. Prince Callum and Co. are finally in the sea of the castout. Now they need to find Erevos' magic prison before the goons do. Prince Callum worries that Claudia and Viren will beat them, and Soren agrees as he knows that they're always a step ahead of them. Ezrin assures them that Domina Profundis told him something they don't know, which is the secret of the prison. Terry, Claudia and Lord Viren are looking for the Brown Island. It's day 30, the day the resurrection spell expires, but they can't see it. Claudia needs to find Erevos so they can save her dad. Terry remembers how they got the map out of the dragon's mouth, so he suspects that the brown island may not be what it seems. It may just be a piece of gunk from between the dragon's teeth. Claudia wonders where Erevos's prison is. Terry deduces that the prison must be deep underwater. Claudia decides to catch a purple pentapus. Prince Callum and co. know that the prison is at the bottom of the sea. The prince now understands why Archmage Akiyu gave him the enchanted amulet with a spell that lets him breathe underwater, which means that only one of them can go underwater. Prince Callum informs them that he can use the runes without the amulet so they could all go down. He explains that the principle is the same as the mage wing spell. They then all dive into the water. The prince and Ezran succeed in breathing underwater, but Rayla can't. She urges Prince Callum and Ezran to go. Claudia mixes the pentapus ink with her own blood. She explains to Terry that she is preparing a spell. Claudia and Terry then share a kiss when he tells her that he is proud of her. She then drinks the potion and is about to dive underwater alone. Her dad suddenly has a vision of her in the bloody water and a blood moon. He shouts begging her not to go but he is too late. Prince Callum and Ezrin swim underwater. The prince casts a spell on both of their feet making them swim faster. Lord Viren suddenly gets a visit from Erevos. He is glad that they're finally on the cusp of each other's reality. He then grabs Viren's arm and borrows his consciousness. He expresses his delight for his imminent freedom. He can sense Claudia approaching and the others as well. But he knows that Claudia is far more powerful. He reminds Lord Viren that he only has a few hours left before his life expires. But he promises to make his resurrection permanent. He mentions an old spell called Infante Sanguine, which has one necessary ingredient, the blood of his child. Lord Viren refuses to partake in this, but Erevos reminds him that he can't expect to wield a powerful life and death magic without some sacrifice. Claudia runs into Prince Callum and King Ezran. She knows that she did some terrible things, but insists she's not evil, and she's doing all of this to save her dad. She then gets mad when she doesn't find the prison and realizes that Ezran knows. She proceeds to attack him, but Prince Callum casts a spell and traps her. Claudia manages to free herself and holds Ezran captive. She orders him to tell her everything he knows, otherwise she squeezes it out of him. Meanwhile, Lord Viren tells Erevos that he isn't a monster and he would never sacrifice his child. Erevos doesn't expect him to sacrifice Claudia or Soren. He suggests sacrificing his other child. Lord Viren doesn't have another one, but Erevos reminds him that they do and their child is cute and has grown into a young homunculus. He promises to show Lord Viren how to use every drop of his living essence to restore his own life and his future. They then teleport elsewhere and he places a knife in Lord Viren's hand. He urges him to make the sacrifice, otherwise he'll die that night. Lord Viren refuses to do it. He realizes that he found himself in the horrifying crossroads because he has followed a dark path. He regrets leading Claudia down the path with him. He vows never to use dark magic again and he's also done with Erevos. Prince Callum tries to fight Claudia but gets overpowered. Just then, Rayla shows up with her bow and shoots Claudia's tentacles. 
Claudia gains the upper hand and subdues Rayla, but Ezra distracts Claudia with the fish, giving time to Prince Callum to rescue Rayla. Claudia screams, vowing to destroy them all. She then holds them all captive. Ezra refuses to tell her where Erevos is. Rayla manages to retrieve her swords and cuts off Claudia's tentacles. Claudia screams in agony. Prince Callum steals her potion and destroys it. Claudia is forced to swim up as she gasps for air. Ezrin leads his friends to a pearl containing Erevos's prison. Elsewhere, Queen Janai has returned. She learns that she has been betrayed. Miana heads to the cave where Kareem is. He cries as he thought she abandoned him. She points out that her loyalty has never wavered. They then kiss. She actually brought him the sun seed as well as an army. Zubeya is dying, but a mushroom mage appears and heals her. Queen Janai has a nightmare about Erevos, who reminds her that she is just like her grandma. She is shocked to learn that he swallowed her. Claudia returns to the shore and reunites with Terry, and her leg is injured. She cries as she failed to save her dad. Terry holds her in his arms and comforts her. Callum, Rayla, and Ezran rejoin the boat. Ezran shows them the pearl that contains Erevos's prison. Lord Viren lies on the ground and recalls what Erevos told him about the sun rising the next day and him not living another day.